Hi friends, it's Vesna here. Thanks for stopping by my channel. Welcome if you're brand new and thank you for coming back if you're returning. For today's video, I am participating in a challenge hosted by Mom Does Life. It is the Useful DIY Challenge. Mom hosts this challenge every single month and it is an awesome challenge. It kind of pushes you to think outside the box and balk. Think outside the box and create something that you can use in your home. She always has a co-host, and her co-host for today is Michelle from Michelle's Cozy Home. Um, both ladies do DIYs, home decor, farmhouse style, trash to treasures, all sorts of home decor type of stuff. Um, I will have both of their channels linked in my description, so make sure you check them out. For today's video, I created a memo holder. Um, so I'll show you what I've done with it, um, how I've created it, and what you could use it for. So I created my memo holder. We're using this sign from the Dollar Tree. I don't actually know when I got this, why I got this, where it came from, but I had it. I keep a stash of things that I want to redo or reuse, and I just put them in a box. And I found this in there, and I thought it would be perfect for my project. So what I had to do with it first was paint it out. Um, I am painting both sides because this will be a memo holder that I keep in my kitchen. So you'll be able to see the back side sometimes too. So I wanted it to be um, kind of nice on both sides. I'm not going to make the back side as nice as the front side. But at least it doesn't have that ugly hope um, writing on it. So I'll show you what I've done. So I started off by removing the um, the little wire because it is a sign so it's for hanging. Um, once I removed that, I went ahead and I painted it. Now for the paint, I used the Art Minds Espresso as well as the Art Minds Lilac. I mixed those two together and I watered it down a little bit. Um, I probably put about 75% espresso and 25% lilac, mixed it up and just painted it out. And that is my base. For this um, make sure you sand it beforehand a little bit just to get the paint to stick on it a bit better um, but no really rhyme or reason to what you're doing here because for me at least because I'm going to be painting it so many different colors um, I'm just really using this as a base coat because I'm just going to be layering the paint on so I have this leftover piece um, from another project. Um, someone had actually given us a big piece of this I don't know, maybe melamine or I'm not sure what it is. Anyway, I, I know what it is. Particle board. There we go. I just couldn't think of the word. And so my husband went and just put a little bit of a slot in here so that I could attach my sign. Now, I was going to do this with my handsaw. I tried and I tried and I tried and I did not succeed, so he wound up using an angle grinder to um, just put this slot, this little slit in here. Um, so I'm gonna attach this in here, um, but first I wanna paint this out. Now I painted the other side. Um, I just did one coat and I'm gonna do another coat and then I'm gonna do this side. And I'm actually going to do several different paint colors. So the first paint color is going to be the same as I did the back side. And then I'm going to layer it after that. So I still have it left over. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that on. Now I do have some white in here because I was using this paintbrush for something white. It doesn't matter because I am doing, like I said, several coats of this. Um, I wanted to go ahead and paint the other side simply because... I, it won't be as nice, well I might actually make it the same as the other side, I'm not sure, I haven't decided, but it's just so that, you know, if I have it somewhere where you can see the back side, it doesn't look like it was such a DIY. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to have to just kind of have this propped up for it to dry, which is okay. Um, I'm going to use this guy here. There we go. There. 
And then I'm going to paint, go ahead and paint this the same color. Uh, this will probably have a harder time sticking just because it is that shiny material. I did sand it down a little bit, but just like barely. I probably should have done more. But Live and learn. As I'm doing it right now, as I'm painting, I think about it and I'm like, oh shoot, I should have done more. Because I did it when I first um, saw it. I just did like a light sand, but I should have probably done it with my palm sander. That's okay. It'll work. Just have to do several coats. Okay, so while that dries, I was going to paint this a different color, but I think I'm going to leave it um, this way. I might distress it a bit. This is a um, candle holder from the Dollar Tree. Now, I was going to use this for... I had made a three-tier... Sorry, I made a two-tier tray, which I was going to make a three-tier tray. No, I did. I made a three-tier tray, but I was going to actually put the tray on top of this as well. But then I didn't like the way it looked, but I had already painted it. And I believe I used um, the black stainless steel from Rust-Oleum, like the hammered paint they have. Um, I, gosh, I did this about two years ago. So, um, But I do like the color, and it did stick on here pretty well. Um, so yeah, I'll be using this as well. Now that this is pretty much dried, I'm going to go ahead and paint it white. I'm going to use just my Valspar paint because I still have it left over. Um, this part is not quite dry, so I'm going to just flip it over and do the other side first. Um, I'm a little bit crunched for time, so that's why I am doing it this way. Normally I would let things dry, but... Now it's going to be like a kind of a different color on the back a little bit. Like I said, I'm okay with that. Um, because um, I just don't want it to be like the original. So I wind up using two coats of the Valspar Ultra semi-gloss paint. I'll show you in the next clip of what that looks like, um, just in case I didn't do a good job showing the last time. Um, so I do two coats just to get it to be completely white, and I'm doing um, both the base as well as the top. I have inserted the base into, I mean the top, the sign into the base, um, into the little slot, and I had to cut off a little bit of it at the bottom just to make it fit a bit better. Um, and so because the Valspar paint was semi-gloss and not a chalk paint, it is a little bit shinier, so I'm just going to sand it down. And you can see the brush strokes and everything, which is okay by me. Uh, I'm just going to sand off the sides to get a little bit of that distressing um, on there. And now I'm just going to go over with some of the espresso just to distress it a little bit more. So I'm making sure that I wipe off the excess so it's not too much. Getting the size here as much as I need to. I'm more heavily distressing this part. So 
I've distressed this piece as much as I wanted to. I heavily distressed it on the sides and then a little bit more over here. That's kind of the look that I'm going for. And then I'm using my Valspar paint and I'm just going to distress the, the holder part of it. Um, so this part I did too much. So I can always like wipe it off if I've done too much, which is great. Um, and just, like I said, just want to distress it a bit. There we go. I might actually distress it a little bit <clears throat> with my um, duck egg blue as well. So I'm distressing this with the duck egg blue because my kitchen has an island. Well, the countertop in the whole kitchen is black with little bits of like, it looks like blue. I don't know that it is blue, but just the way the light shines on it. So I've painted my mm. island a duck egg blue. So I'm just going to add this just so it kind of brings out those colors. Um, so again, you want to make sure you brush off the excess and just very lightly I'm painting it on, which will give me that aged look that I am going for. So I decided to add the duck egg blue to the, um, to here as well. And what I'm doing is. I'm very lightly brushing it on. There we go. As these dry, I'm going to just um, paint my clothespin a whole bunch of different colors, I think. What I'll do is um, I'll paint it the duck egg blue, and then I'll just distress it. I'm going to attach it right to there. So I painted the clothespin a whole bunch of colors. I painted it with the duck egg blue, the Valspar white, as well as the espresso, just to give it kind of the same aged effect as the main piece. For the finished piece, here it is. I wanted to show you guys several options of what you could do with this. So you could use it as a little shopping list holder. You could use it as a chore holder. So for me, when school starts back up, I'll use it as a little chore holder for my kids to kind of be able to look at what they still need to do. Um, but for right now, I'm going to use it as a shopping list. I have a little notepad there you know, a list of what we need, as well as a little Sharpie that you can put on the lip of the piece um, to keep your pen or whatever you want to keep there. Um, I think it's a really useful little thing. Um, if you didn't want to use it for anything like that, you could always just use it as a picture holder, like a picture frame. So I just wanted to show you here what the finished piece looks like with a picture. Um, this is actually my parents, myself, and my sister, um, obviously many, many moons ago. If you like the way this turned out, um, please make sure you hit that like button. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. If you want to see more, do consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell twice so that you can see all of my videos. Make sure you check out the playlist. It's The description is linked below. And check out Mom's channel as well as Michelle's channel. channel. They are really creative ladies and amazing for hosting this challenge. Um, also check out the videos that I've left for you at the end. Um, have a great day and stay safe.